Um, if you have your Bibles, by the way, just, just hang tight because we're, we're going to be, uh, we'll move around today. Um, uh, some quick review, very quick review, first of all, is to make sure that everybody understands. Why are we studying about angels and uh, demons uh, for that matter? It's because it plays an integral role in the hearts and the lives of Christian believers in the world that we live in today. If we could uh, have a deeper understanding, maybe it would help us to understand more the security that we have. I know a lot of people who carry a great deal of fear in their life all the time. Like just, a, just an amazing, just an, a, an inordinate amount of fear, an overabundance of fear in their life. And, and uh, they let that fear rule them. And uh, what I, I believe that as, even as believers, if we understood the protection that we have in Christ and how he really is there, he really does watch over us, he really does have our lives in his hands through his angels, that it would give us that sense of peace sometimes that we need. It doesn't mean that, that danger is not real, but it means that we have a peace that can only be explained from being a personal, uh, having a personal relationship with God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, you're, uh, here's the one kind of, this is going to be our, this is our theme throughout what we're learning. And if you haven't highlighted it yet, I bet you will soon. But in, this is one that we will just continue to know. I encourage you to memorize this. And memorize uh, Ephesians 6, 12, where it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So the, God wants us to realize, and, and even when Paul wrote this, he wants us to understand that we don't wrestle. We, we, we get all t t caught up in this skin that we're in thinking this is where our fight is, when our fight is really uh, something that is inward in us and that our fight is against a darkness and, and an, an, an invisible enemy that we cannot even see, and yet it, in, it can impact every decision that some people make for the negative, for the, for the bad. So just because we can't see, see demons does not mean that they are not real. Know that. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean they're not real. There is a, an invisible world all around us, and most of us are not aware. Right now, by the way, uh, you know, Wednesday nights are always the, le the, the lesser group on Wednesday nights. So you always have less people that come on Wednesday nights. And, uh, but if we, could, if we could see that extra dimension that's in this room right now, if we could see that dimension that's not, not seen to us at this moment, we would be able to see angels angels that that are literally all encompassing it's like it's like a heavenly host we'd be able to see in this room right now and 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 if we'll even talk about this tonight but not, when we think about angels too angels are not the these meek little you know you know oh that's a cute little cherubim there you know you know what i always called my daughter a cherubim with horns uh it, but it, it's it's not that it, it, it's that's not an angel an angel's not something that we see that is small and insignificant but angels were made and created powerful and we're going to talk about that tonight too so remember that 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 this invisible world around us is full and on top of these angels that are here we would also be able to see demons if we could see into that other dimension of a world I, I even believe uh, in, in a, this is where uh, we, for those that are believers in Christ have a personal relationship with him uh, there is a peace that passes all understanding that we have that that places this like this sense of of peace in our spirit that makes us not be so fearful if you're afraid of everything I can tell you right now, it's not because God placed that fear there. It's not because he did. When we have that constant fear, that's not, that is not, it's not of God. So we, we need to understand, if, we, if we're believers in Christ, there is a peace that passes all understanding that we have God, that, that watches over us. And we'll even talk about that tonight, even when we use the term guardian angels. Uh, I want to also address something about Lucifer tonight. Lucifer. So, 
If you have your Bibles, if you're in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 19, I, I want to address what Lucifer, uh, what, what, what was he? When he was in heaven, when he was uh, part of the angelic hosts, what was he? I mean, was he, uh, uh, you know, he, he's never mentioned as an archangel. If you read your Bible from cover to cover and you study who, uh, who, who Lucifer was, you're going to find out he wasn't, he's not addressed as an archangel. Sometimes we make that assumption that Lucifer had a very significant role in, in that. But we also believe that he was a cherub, a cherub. In other words, he was, he was a part of him. A cherub, by the way, in the order of the angels, a cherub or is a, is a singular guard, guard. A guardian is a guard. In, in other words, the purpose in a cherub is to, to guard something. Uh, we see cherubs that remember when that that were in the Garden of Eden. They sent them to, sent to the east gate of gar, the Garden of Eden. They sent the cherubs to make sure that Adam and Eve did not go back into the garden. So he was and but he loose. But in in this case here, Lucifer. And what we're about to read, let's read this. So, son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. The, every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, tur turquoise, emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were the, on the holy mountain. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you, day you were created till iniquity was found in you. <laughs> but by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you. And what does it say? What, what is the title he gives him here? O covering what? Cherub. O covering cherub. From the midst of the fiery stones, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your, your splendor. And I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitudes of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. We have this both as a prophecy there, but Ezekiel, I was saying Daniel that whole that time. Okay, are they? All right. So the angels have different ranks and different classifications. Angels have different ranks in different classifications. And I'm gonna walk through these with you tonight just so you have an idea about what they are. So uh, first of all, uh, there are the, we, we talk in this, this term, you'll, you'll hear uh, their classifications, the hosts. This is uh, the, the hosts. So the hosts are the warrior angels. When you hear that, you talk about, you talk about the terms like heavenly host, but it refers to the warrior angels. So hosts is one, one group, and that probably, in, in fact, as you categorize this too, like the host or the warrior angels, Michael, we believe, who was an archangel, was in all likely he was a, a warrior angel, host. Uh, so one of the other different classifications of angels were messengers, the messenger angels. So what, what were messengers? It was kind of obvious, but they were used to communicate with, with humans. They were used to send a message to humans. Now, here's the thing about the message that they would usually send to us. If, if an angel came to you in any aspect, an angel is not going to sit and tell you, share the gospel with you. 
And why do we say that? Because uh, angels don't have any, they don't have an understanding, a deep understanding of salvation. Because they themselves are these powerful beings, and that so they, they don't understand that. So, but, but in this case here, they are still messengers that send messages to us. Another kind of, another kind of classification are guards, guards, cherubims, cherubims. So the cherubim would be like the guards. Where do you find the cherubim? If you look at, in, in the, the place where, where, where God is, where God the Father is, there are the guards, the cherubim, that guard, the, guard people in the presence of, of God himself. That, that, that's their job. There are other types uh, that we see that are mentioned in the Bible that uh, we have less understanding about, but that is the living beasts, the living beast. And that's even not just a singular category, but even with some possible additions. So the living beast or another type of angel or another classification of angel. See, the thing about angels is that when they were created, that there are specific purposes they were created for. Now, the beauty of us is we were, we were born. In other words, we, we each in here have a father and a mother. Whether they're a good father, good mother, uh, bad, good or bad, you, we have a mother, mother and father. And we were conceived. But in, even in the Bible, the Bible teaches us that you know, when you were in the womb, I knew you. That God had a plan for your life. Well, when, in the case of the angels, though, they, they were born with a specific, that was a specific duty in, in what they do. So let's, let's summarize that one more time to this, if you just want to get these down. But you have the hosts, the cherubim, the seraphim, the seraphim, the living beasts, and the six or more classifications there. Um, something uh, just uh, just that comes to mind here, but if you have your uh, let's see, if you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah chapter six. Isaiah, cha and the reason why I just wanted to share this with you. So this is Isaiah. Remember the story of Isaiah, and Isaiah is having. Uh, in this is in the year King Uzziah died, starting with verse one. The, I saw the Lord sitting on a high, a throne high and lifted up, and with a his robe filled the temple. Above it stood what? Seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And with one he cried and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So what we see here, and if, in fact, uh, we see that even that they, are, they do specific things. And uh, if we go down to verse 6, it said, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. So you see that the seraphim... And that are to, there to do the bidding of God. Of course, a seraphim can't forgive sin, but in the presence of God, in the name of God, of, of, of the Father, that he sits there, he, he, he touches the tongs and cleanses, cleanses Isaiah so he can be used. So that's an example of seraphim. Okay, okay so Isaiah 6, if you ever uh, are curious. Something else about angels that are, are fascinating is the fact that angels have superhuman strength superhuman strength and intelligence and how do we know this once again just just for me to uh, assert like uh, like uh, speculate about this it'd be one thing but the scriptures actually show examples of this in fact in Psalm chapter 103 verses 19 and 20 it says that the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Did you hear that? That angels excel in strength. 
you know, whereas a, a human man may be able to lift and do certain things, but an angel has superhuman strength. Verse 103, let's see, 103, 21 and 22 says, Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, your ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, and all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8 says this. It says, And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anytime you see a reference to angels, especially in the, in the course of their work here, it, 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 it is presenting them to us as superhuman. In other words, for, for an angel, and it wouldn't be anything for an angel to, 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 to subdue a man or anything else. In other words, he has superhuman strength. This is uh, interesting when we think about this. You know, so the, to the stone that was rolled uh, in front of Jesus' tomb. You know, it, 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 take, take or leave this. It, was, it, it weighed in the area of 4,000 pounds. 4,000 pounds. Okay? So, in, in fact, if, if you know any, if, if you've studied uh, that of the, the, the tomb of Jesus, what you're going to find out is that at the tomb there is a literal uh, there's a, a literal like groove uh, in front of the tomb because what would happen over a period of time is the body stayed in the tomb the body would begin to to not smell good the body would begin to decay uh, and and uh, the, it would begin to decompose and so in order to, uh, to, to so even for the tombs to be uh, not a place uh, that was unpleasant. They literally would make it so the stone, when it rolled in, into place, almost created a little bit of a seal. And they did that because it rolled into a groove right in front of of the place that the in, in honed into the to the rock or into the into wherever it may be into the mountain. And so, in in turn, it would be see kind of in a, so, so many words, it would be sealed. It would be impossible for someone to move that stone. In fact, how they would have to move it is it would take, in some cases, four to six men using special tools in order to move it if the stone ever had to be moved away. And that's where we come to Matthew 28, verses 2 and 3. It says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow and the guards shook for fear of men, of him, fear of him and became like dead. What would make a Roman guard be that fearful if you can imagine it, the presence of an angel, the, the mightiness of the angel, his very countenance when he's there, would, would cause them to be in total panic and fear. So even a Roman soldier, a, a hardened warrior soldier, would be brought to literally, it says here, to literally to frozen fear in the presence of an angel of God. Just one, just one angel is all it would take for him to be that way. Angels have superhuman intelligence. Now I want you to think about this. There, uh, er, last week we talked about the fact that angels have been around since before creation. Angels have been present since before creation. We know this because the Bible teaches us that literally that while, while God was in the process of creating, the angels were there. The angels were there the rejoicing with God over his creation. So that means, by the way, if you think about it, they have seen a whole lot in their life, haven't they? They've seen so much. Uh, they, have, they have been present at every major event that ever happened in the world, ever. So that they know, they've seen things, 
And for that, they, and they have accumulated wisdom. They, they are super intelligent. So Matthew 24, 36 makes a comment. This is why it, it just it brings to light. It, it, it actually opens up this comment when it says this, 24, 36, Matthew 24, 36. It says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Speaking, speaking of that time that will come. Well, why, why, why bother to put that not even, not even the angels? It's because of the, the, most, the most superior intelligence on the planet. I mean, before, I mean, and this, this uh, t let's take, let's take um, uh, the God out of the equation here, but the most superior intelligence that exists on this planet at this time, this unseen intelligence, are angels. They are the, the beings that, that know more, and, and it says here, that's why it's so important to understand. So if not even the angels in heaven know about that day and hour when it will come, when, when the Son of Man returns. If they don't even know, that's a big deal because it's, it's inferring that they know everything. There's nothing that's really hidden from them. They know everything. So the implication is angels know virtually, virtually everything. Something else about angels uh, is that they are unseen watchers of the earth. Unseen watchers of the earth. And th that they, they see things that, that we cannot even begin to understand. So they're, they're unseen uh, watchers. Uh, what, pu what, <laughs> what would puzzle, here's a question for you, what would puzzle an extremely intelligent angelic being? What would puzzle an extremely intelligent angelic being. You ready for this? Verse, look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. It says, Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not that, uh, reveal that. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things which angels desire to look into. You, you, you get what this is saying here? It, it's saying here that there is something. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us they were ministering this, okay? We were, were given the gospel. We were given the gospel. We were given the gift of salvation, and it says here that even now, angels, they, they desire to look into it because they don't understand salvation. The, it's, it's not, an, it's the most supremely intelligent beings uh, that, that are on the planet don't understand it. Angels can't understand why, here, you ready for this? Why God would want to save such weak and stupid creatures. Think about that for a minute. Angels can't understand it. Think about it. An angel gets up every day. In fact, an angel doesn't even go to bed. Okay, but but an angel uh, takes uh, it, it, each day, just goes and whatever the father says for him to do, he does. That's it. Whatever it is that the uh, the father, wherever the father sends an angel. It, it, even as a messenger, as a host warrior, as a guard, as a guardian angel, whatever the case is, they go. They just go. So it, they're, they're obedient. In fact, except for that one-third of, of, of the angels who followed who? Who followed, had, the, had the audacity to follow Lucifer? 
I don't know what they were thinking, but it shows me something else, that God made even angels with, with uh, a unique and uh, individual sense uh, of understanding and the spirit. In other words, uh, he, he lets angels make their own decisions in so many words. It, it, they, he lets the angels actually have a personality and so and, and, and actually so so it's angels aren't just these creatures that are like zombies or robots that just go around but they're they're creatures of personality and yet they can't understand why God would want to save such weak and stupid creature I mean after all can we can, can you imagine this as an angel be, you know, if, let's say you're your angel. Let's say whoever your guardian angel is, and we're going to answer that question too tonight. Let's say you have an, your guardian angel, and that guard, guard is watching over you, and 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 you have a weakness in your life, and you have a, you have you have something that that just pursue, that weakness just comes into your life, and you submit to it, you're subdued by it, and you fall to it over and over and over again. Can you imagine? I, I just wish if you could hear that angel hollering at you, if that angel could come out of his dominion, that that or that that if he could come out uh, of that dimension that he's in, if you could hear him, I bet you that he is so mad at you and so frustrated with you because you keep falling over and over and over again, and you let your and, and yet you serve a God who says. I love you so much that I'm going to give you grace. If you would just call out to me, I will show you grace. I will save you by grace. And the angels are just sitting there going, you know what? I haven't done a thing wrong. I just do what I'm told. And yet that weak and stupid creature over there keeps falling and keeps failing and keeps falling and keeps failing. So do you see why it's hard for an angel to understand what when we talk about salvation I mean they've seen the grace of God but, but you have gotta understand these angels have seen the wrath of God too I mean these angels are the angels that know that one-third of, uh, of, of the angels are awaiting judgment as we speak and are going to be cast into the lake of fire those angels are aware of that they know this and yet he looks at us, 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 uh, sinful, sinful, sinful beings like us, sinful human beings of which you're going to be a human for all eternity. That's never going to change. You're a human. You're born human. You will always be human. You won't be converted into an angel one day. You may be, tr you're going to be transformed into this amazing body one day, but you were always going to be human. And praise God for that because you have salvation because of that. But let's answer that question, by the way. Do each of us have a guardian angel? Do each of us have a guardian angel? Turn to Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 and 11. Matthew 18, 10 and 11. It says this. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Did you hear that? For I say to you that in heaven their angels and, and by the way, if we do a word study on that, that is the possessive, their angels always see the face of the Father who is in heaven. You may wonder, because that can be confusing. You say, oh, what do you mean always see the face of the Father? It's like, is it like they got like virtual glasses or something? And no. Your guardian angels have unlimited access to God, the Father. Did you hear that? Your guardian angels are given unlimited access to God the Father they can go to him 
anytime. Now, if you, if you were to see the, where, where, where God is, in fact, Isaiah, and we talked about Isaiah earlier, the cherubim and the seraphim that are there guarding the throne of God, they don't just let anybody come in there. Not just any angel get, gets to even come before God. That, that doesn't, that's not how it works. But your guardian angel, us, talking about our, you know, the, the, the believer's guardian angel has unlimited access to God at any moment, any time. There's, there's no limits on that. That's how much God loves you. Because he's given that. You, ha you have a guardian angel that has instant access to the Father. And he can get to him at any time. Daniel 4, 17. This decision is by the decree of the watchers. And the sentence by the word of the holy ones. In order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men gives it to whomever he will and sets it over the lowest of men this decision is by the decree of what the watchers daniel 417 the watchers uh in fact uh in 417 from uh, nlt says therefore angels are only servants spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation so therefore angels are only servants spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. 91, uh, 11 and 12. I thought this is just, this is, you can call this trivia. You can call it whatever you want to. But have you ever wondered where the phrase guardian angel came from? I know. No, Pastor, I've always wondered that. Yeah, I sure have. Okay, all right, so where did that phrase come from? Where did guardian angels where, where do the phrase guardian angels come from and if you ever wondered where it came from look up psalm 91 uh, verse 11 and 12 psalm 91 11 and 12 and you know this um, by the way if you if you know he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty but here in 11 and 12 it says for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. The term guardian angel came from Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. That's where it originated from. That it is a description and depiction in the Psalms of who we are, guardian angels. Huh? I want to go through tonight. Now, I would like to walk through these with you tonight uh, as in the latter part here to talk about the different roles of the angels, the different roles. Like what, what, what exactly are they here to do for us? Well, what, what exactly do, are they here to enact? So we're going to, let, let's look at this. So, so the first, one of the, one, number one, uh, the first thing is that they are, guardian angels uh, they, they are they're guardian angels for to provide for us they're guardian angels uh, and, and to 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 be to make provisions for us we see examples of this in fact if you have your Bibles turn to first Kings uh, this is a story of Elijah but first Kings chapter 19 verse 6 first Kings 19 verse 6 1 Kings 19, verse 6. So it says here, and let me pick up with 5. It says, Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and he drank. And he lay back down again, and the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and he ate and he drank, for he went in the strength of that, good 40, that food forty days and forty nights at Horeb, the mountain of God. So it says here that Daniel was ministered to by what? By an angel, by an angel that, that so the, the part of the guardian angels uh, is to, 
to protect us. Another example where the guardian angel moves is in Genesis chapter 21, verse 17 through 20. 21, 17 through 20. And that is the, that's the story of, when, of, of Hagar and Ishmael when they are uh, banished or, or they are put out. And an angel comes to help them. Another thing that angels do for us is that they protect us. Angels protect us. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. He, he shuts the lion's mouth. I think that's just awesome. I, I, I cannot imagine that, but literally, Daniel, it, the, the mouth of the lion is shut for Daniel. And in Matthew chapter 26, verse 53, there's something that Jesus says, and we can easily miss this. You've heard the song, He could have called 10,000 angels. We've heard that, but if we look at this, Jesus says in Matthew 26, verse 53, that I could have called 12 legions of angels. I could have called. Jesus is saying to himself, he's saying to his disciples, you know what, I could have easily called and gotten the protection of the angels in this human form that I am taking on right now and yet he, he didn't but it says here that a, the angels have that that um, role to protect us something else they do is they deliver us they deliver us Acts 5 18 and 19 Acts 5 18 and 19 and also Acts 12 7 through 11 in these two stories, I love it, the apostles are arrested. Remember the apostles have been arrested and the angels come and they let them out of prison. So the apostles have been arrested and the angels come and, and let them out. But then in uh, 27, I think, excuse me, in Acts 12, 7 through 11, remember uh, now this time uh, Peter's been in prison before or they, they've thrown him in prison before and he ends up getting out again and he's being ready to be executed and so they have Peter down in about three levels I mean down about three levels into the prison and it says here that angels literally whisk them out from the prison while uh, so and take them out and take them into to safety they uh, something else they do to us that is that they strengthen and encourage us angels strengthen and encourage us Matthew 4 11 Jesus was fasting remember Jesus was fasting and the angels ministered to him and in Acts 27 verse 23 and 24 the angel reassures Paul that they will live on the ship from the storm remember when they're they're uh, the angel actually warned Paul hey 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 you're about to you're about to enter into a, an, a, a bad storm. Paul tells the, the captain of the ship, hey, you better watch out because you're about to enter into a really bad, you know, you need to, you need to divert. You need to do something different. The captain's not going to listen to him and says, I'm going to do what I want to do. And bam, they hit the storm and Paul gets to go back and say, tell the captain, I told you so. Uh, but that, by the way, I told you so, but the, but the angel of the Lord tells us we're going to live. We're going, we're, going, we're going to be okay, all right? I'm just letting you know, okay, that I was right, but we're going to live through this. So they're there to strengthen. They're there to encourage. In some cases, angels are used to answer certain prayers. Angels are used to answer certain prayers. Acts 10, verses 1 through 7. Acts 10, verses 1 through 7. Cornelius is praying and the angel comes and tells him what to do so Cornelius is in the process of his prayer and an angel comes and and so his prayer is answered by means of the angel communicating to him and in Acts chapter 12 verses 5 through 11 Peter is in prison and the whole church is praying remember the whole church is praying and in the course of their prayers, they're in there going, God, please, 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 Lord, would you free, would you watch over Peter, and would you watch over him? So, please, Lord, watch over him, watch over him. Nobody gets the door. And who's at the door? 
An angel had let Peter out, and he was at the door waiting. I mean, and, and so they were able to rejoice with Peter. So we see how that's, that's God used the angels for these specific tasks. Here's what I think, summarily what I want y'all to take away from this tonight, and it's this. That I want you to understand that you are on God's side. God's not on your side. You are on God's side, and being a child of God means that you have angels surrounding you. You are under the protection and guidance of angels. Now, here's the thing about that. Does that mean that they will save your human, your physical life at every turn? In some cases, they could. And you know what? In all likelihood, there is some story in here, in each one of your life, where you, you can go back and, and say, I don't know how I came out of that situation. I can think about one time in particular. I, I remember I was, um, I was all of, uh, I think, about 13 years old. A uh, tornado had just come through Pale City, Alabama, and, uh, and it, was, it was back in the 70s. And, and I remember it had torn Pale City, Alabama up from one end to the other. Uh, the house that we were in, I remember looking out the back door as uh, and, and all I could see, um, first of all, my ears felt like they were about to burst, and all I could see was this white, white, huge, almost I almost couldn't see the sides of it, but a funnel as it was coming toward the back of the house. I'm watching oak trees literally fall, turning our backyard into a jungle, literally a jungle uh, here in in. I'm listening upstairs and I'm hearing things break, glass is breaking, glass is coming into the kitchen, the kitchen is all glass and every bit of the glass broke and my dad's literally throwing us under the staircase trying to, trying to keep us safe and then I remember all of a sudden it getting calm and the storm's gone. I remember us going outside, and here's where I, sometimes I believe we, there's things that we can think about where we're like, man, God really watched after me. I was outside, 13 years old, and there were power lines down everywhere, everywhere. The power lines, live lines all over the ground. And all, my dad looks over and sees his, his smart son, Steve, jumping over the power lines like he's doing a hurdle race over and over again just back and forth and just carrying on and, and I slipped and I almost touched one of the lines one time and, and literally my dad finally came and jerked me up and I always thought you know there's these moments in your life where you're like man it could only be a guardian angel that could have kept me from doing something that was already really stupid and all I could think to myself was my guardian angel who I could not see looking at me screaming at the top of his lungs you are a frail stupid human <laughs> that's all I could think of you know, uh, because of what I was doing I just believe there are so many examples that you can think of in your life of where as a believer that God has watched after you through the use of an angel who is there to watch over you to make sure you, you, you don't dash your foot on a rock or, or something but but has watched over you in ways and the reason that you're sitting here right now is because of God.